What's up guys, my name is Evan Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. Today I'll be teaching you guys the top three effects all built into After Effects that you can use to create sick music video effects. This is just a combination of just some of the top three effects that I use when editing music videos. And I found that, you know, just through different combinations and just mix matching them, you can just create an array of effects that just overall looks great for music videos, especially these synth rage hip hop videos that are really popular right now. They're all built inside After Effects, no plugins at all required, and just really easy to use. But before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure you like this video and subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it really, really mean a lot if you guys could. Also, if you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Now that we are inside of After Effects, of course, you know, have your footage loaded up. I just have some footage for here from a music video we're working on. One of the first things that we're gonna do before we jump into our very, very first effect is we are going to rotoscope. I guess rotoscope could be considered an effect, but it's just, you know, something that is really common. You're probably just gonna need for a music video sooner or later down the line. One of the first things that we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the layer that we're gonna edit, work with. So we're gonna just simply hit Command D while selecting on the layer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to this top layer right here, select it, double click it and duplicate it. Now, if you are already familiar with rotoscoping, you know how to rotoscope, you can go ahead and skip to this marked time frame. But for those who don't or are just starting out, here's just a quick basic rundown on rotoscoping. It's extremely useful for effects like this and you'll need it, you know, like I said, sooner or later. Once you double click on the composition, you should see a frame like this. You have all these different icons right here. If you don't and you just are still on the main composition page, just remember double click and it will bring up this page. Then we're gonna come over here to this pen brush icon right here and you see your mouse turns green. Simply select the subject that you want to work on and, and you know, remove from the scene. And then you can simply drag your, your, your marker along the time frame. If you see rotoscope messes up, you can go ahead and color over the areas that it messed up on. Mine's right now is a bit laggy, so it's updating as we go. Continue to drag your keyframe throughout the subject. If there are areas that it selects that you don't want selected, you can simply hold Option or Alt and your mouse will turn red and you can deselect them and like that, it will remove them. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this process as it can be a bit lengthy. And voila, once you have finally rotoscoped all of your subject, hit the freeze icon right here. And what this will simply do is just lock in all of your rotoscope frames. So we're gonna go ahead and speed this up as well. And now with all the rotoscoping out the way, once you're still on this freeze frame, just simply hit back to this composition setting. And if you hit the visibility on the bottom layer, you can see we have an entirely masked out rotoscope separated subject. You can go ahead and adjust the feathering and shift edge if there are some edges you know that need to be refined. But with all the rotoscoping out the way, for our very first effect of the video, we are going to be using the turbulent displace effect. Now this effect, you just search up turbulent displace and it should come up. This effect can be applied you know, to either both our rotoscope or bottom layer. I'm gonna apply it to our bottom layer first and I'm just gonna turn off the visibility for our rotoscope just because we won't really be needing it right now. I made everything warped and weird looking. You can see we have a nice little panel of controls over here. You can adjust the amount, so I can increase this amount. And if you go up really high, we get some holes. You can adjust the size, how big you want the warp. You see, we make it really small. It gives it this like liquid-like effect. And you can also adjust the complexity and the evolution, which, you know, just all chain to other components of it. One popular effect I like to use the turbulent displace for is for like a sort of liquid explosion type effect. It's just a really simple and fun one. Um, what I do is I simply keyframe it. I'm gonna hit the drop down here of this turbulent displace in our timeline over here. And I'm just going to set our size to about 24 and then I'm gonna set our amount to around you know, 500. I'm gonna keyframe both the amount and size at the very beginning along with our evolution as well. Then I'm gonna drag, you know, a couple frames, maybe like 75% away of the video. And I am basically going to adjust this size to a really high value so everything's really warped. And then I'm going to adjust our amount to around zero. We can also adjust the complexity just because I you know, included that as there in there. And now if you play this through, you can see we have a nice little explosion effect of this turbulent like water-like displace effect. Now, before we're finished with this effect, one thing we always do here at 11% is keyframe. You always adjust the keyframes, always bezier. We never leave anything linear because linear is trash. 
I don't know, I'll come up with a better catchphrase for dumping on linear keyframes. We're going to start off with the amount, hit the graph icon on the amount, and now you can see we have a nice little linear line. We don't want that. It's very simple to adjust this. Don't get confused by the graph, it's basically just a graph of you know the movement and values of your settings. We are simply going to drag this anchor icon handle out and upward until we get this nice little round U curve and a, and an exponential curve. I'd assume that's what we call it. Then you can just go ahead and set on this one, you know, just adjust it and mess around. Now, if we play back this video, we have a nice smooth ease in effect with this amount right here. You can co of course go ahead and you know just adjust the, the Bezier feel of the, you know, the rest of the values to add that smoothness to it. But I think overall in general, the amount adds enough, you know, fluidity to the effect that we can move on. Once you're done with the graph, you can just go ahead and just select the graph icon again and we'll return you back to the normal timeline. One of the cool things about this effect that I you know, personally like is that it can be also applied to the rotoscope layers. Now there's so many effects that you can pretty much do with the turbulence displays besides the liquid explosion. But for example, we can take this rotoscope layer right here. We can hit command D to duplicate it. I'm gonna come back over here to our, our bottom layer with the turbulent displays effect. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to turn the effect off just so we can, you know, for visibility's sake, come to this middle rotoscope layer and I can just paste those effects. And now you can see we got this nice little liquid explosion just behind our subject. And like I said, there's just so many things that you can go ahead and just do with this effect. You know, I can increase the size, the, the position, and you know, just create so many cool different iterations with this effect all through, you know, one turbulence displays effect. So just for this effect's sake, we're just gonna go ahead and delete this other rotoscope layer and turn the effect back on on our bottom layer just because, you know, I like the effect and look of it. Moving on to our second top number two effect that is an absolute must is going to be our map displacement effect. So we are going to search up map right here and it should come up or displacement map effect. We can go ahead, take this and drag this to our bottom layer once again. I'm just going to, just for visibility's sake, I'm just going to turn off our turbulent display so we can see what this map is doing. What map basically does is it adjusts the pixel values of the scene that you're you know, editing and it just distorts and makes everything look just really cool, trippy and weird. I think it works off of contrast or your edges. I, I don't know what the code is, but it honestly just overall gives a really crazy effect and makes things look really trippy, especially when you keyframe it. There is a value for a horizontal displacement, as you can see right here I'm using, as this map will either move left or right. There is also a vertical displacement, which I prefer the most. It's up to you, honestly, on your preference of scene. As you can see, there's some black areas where the map just kind of leaves and just leaves the scene empty. You can hit this warp pixels around setting, and it basically will just adjust for that loss in pixels. Now, my favorite part for this effect, just like any other effect, is of course keyframing it. I'm gonna come over here to the very beginning of this effect, increase this value, this map value up to a really high value like I have right now. It's like about 900 to 800 ish. Then I'm gonna come all the way over here to the you know, about like 75% way of the video and I'm just going to decrease this keyframe back to zero. And now you can see we have a nice looking map collide effect. For certain cases, what might even be cooler is adjusting the map even past or below zero, just so that the map doesn't even like perfectly align and you still have just a little bit of warped background just for the rest of your shot and whatnot. And now you can see our map collides in and then it eases out into another warped scene going on right here. Once again, like all our effects, we never leave anything linear. Go ahead and make sure you're selecting on the vertical displacement, hit the graph tool icon. And obviously this is just preference, but it's a preference that I prefer you all should do because no one should have linear effects. It just ruins After Effects and is a disgrace to the editing community. Like we did last time, just adjust the anchor handles and you should get you know a nice smooth shape like this, like this little exponential curve and then this little V, long V tail. And now you can see if we play it back, we have this nice, trippy looking map effect where our scene is just kind of glitching out of itself and and the effect just overall just looks really really cool once again combining this with our turbulent displacement effect of course obviously having a warped effect and then map on top of it just makes things 10 times more chaotic 
but combining these effects just really creates an insane looking, just crazy looking visual effect. And now ladies and gentlemen, for our third and final effect. This effect, which is actually sort of a bonus because it's more of two effects than one, but these two effects being your hue saturation, which we are going to search out hue saturation should come up under color correction, apply this to our bottom layer. And lastly is our glow effect. Now these two effects are just go hand in hand with each other. I love the effects they create, but for now we're just gonna turn off our glow for just, you know, effects sake and teaching sake. And we're just going to operate with our hue. For those of you who don't know, hue just basically adjusts the color. It's a very, you know, common effect, especially used when it comes to color grading and after effects, but it also can be used to create cool music video effects as such. We're gonna come all the way over here to this very pretty much end keyframe and we are going to set under our hue saturation drop down. You can go ahead and turn off your graph as well. We're gonna select the keyframe icon on the channel range at the very end at just the normal value of zero. And then we're gonna come all the way back over here to the beginning. If you don't see any value right here, no worries because the channel value master hue is right here on this effects panel control. And here you can see this knob that we can just adjust and rotate. And as we adjust and rotate it, our scene changes colors. And now you can see if we play it back, we have this nice looking crazy rainbow effect that is going on in the background right here. And it just really makes, last but not least, to turn on our glow effect. Once you hit the effect icon again on our glow effect, your scene is probably gonna be crazily saturated by now. This is obviously dependent on your clip and the threshold value. So you can go ahead and adjust, uh, increase or decrease the threshold value. I'm gonna keep it at a value around 60 just because I think this is the amount of glow that I want. And now to adjust all these harsh Outline, we're just going to change the glow radius. And you can see as we change the glow radius, everything becomes a little bit more gradient and dreamy and just adds a really cool effect. Now I might go ahead and just adjust the threshold once again until I get a nice effect. And if we played things once out for a final effect, you can see we have this crazy, insane looking water glow effect. Now there's just so many ways that you can use these effects in just co different combinations. Like I said, you can apply these effects to the rotoscope layer separately, or you can just apply them to the background like I did, or you could just use the effect entirely without a rotoscope subject like here. And you can just see we have this crazy looking just warp mush, which they all in general just create crazy looking effects. These top three, or I should say four effects are just really great essentials to have, especially if you're trying to do these crazy looking synth music video edits. Make it your own, adjust it. Don't copy this tutorial down to the nitty gritty detail, unless if you like the result. And with that being said, here is the final result. If you guys made it to the end of the video, thank you again so much for watching. I hope at the end of this, you guys will be able to walk away with an effect or multiple effects that you can use for your future music videos and projects. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe with notification bell on for future updates and tutorials like this. If you have any questions or suggestions on what you'd like to see from us next, please be sure to leave a comment down below. Also feel free to add us at Instagram at 11% prod. We'd love to see what you guys create. Once again, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.